Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. It is Tuesday. <clears throat> We're going to do star signs today. Excuse me, I'm just clearing my throat. Okay. Well, it's cleared now, is it? Yeah, it's cleared. Okay. The throat is cleared now. Okay. I was thinking about how to do this. And I think I'm going to put them into their seasonal groups. So... Cancer, happy birthday, it's your month, you start off summer, okay, and then we have Leo and Virgo that assist you this summertime, so let's have a look at these three signs, so there's Cancer, there's Leo, okay, and there's Virgo, these are the energy oracle cards, and I'm going to use the flower language, Cancer. Leo and Virgo. Oh, we're going for the Rider Waite Tarot now. Then in reverse, so let me turn them around. The High Priestess is at the bottom of the deck, in reverse. So this summer, time to follow our intuition, do you think? The underlying energy is not tapping into the intuition, Cancer. So I'm feeling the energy of all you summer signs. Okay, follow your intuition. Uh, do you want some more cards? We can give you some more cards. How many do you want? Three? Okay. You reminded me that I need to put the rubbish out for tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> We're putting the rubbish out today? Yeah, for tomorrow. Uh-huh. What's the vibe? I can see the bottom of the bottom of the channel of love cards and it's the devil energy, but it says addicted. Okay, cancer. Leo, Virgo. Cancer, you're vibing a bit here. You've got three different vibes going on. Uh, so the underlying energy is not trusting your intuition and uh, the, the overriding energy is mischievousness because we've got the devil. Okay, what the devil's got into you? <clears throat> That mischievous face there looks a little bit revengeful. <coughs> revengeful. Red hearts all round. And the random cards. Okay. So Cancer, let's start with you because you get the ball rolling this summertime and then whatever you put into motion, Leo is going to pick up, okay, and um, bring that into fruition and then Pisces will wrap things up for you as uh, we kind of hand over to Libra who will get the ball rolling in their department for autumn. <clears throat> let's pop Leo up there. Virgo up there, and we're starting with you, Cancer. Cherish. Brother. Bliss. That's the lover's card. Mischievous is mischievous, isn't it? Right, I'll let you have a look at these in a moment. So, Cancer, there's a mischievous energy here. Uh, I feel like your blood was boiling. 
He might have cooled down a bit now. This is the energy of, um, it took me to, you've been tangoed. So you kind of had a slap in the face. Okay. A bit embarrassing. How do you handle this? The bliss of the lovers is here. This could be revenge uh, regarding, well, a lover. You've got cherish brother. Can't quite make sense of those at the moment. You've got <laughs> the devilish energy here. And then you've got love struck. The sirens outside. I actually feel as if you might have found out that your partner had a lover and was love struck elsewhere. We'll work out this part in a minute. Um, you're feeling mischievous. You've got a plan to kind of... Have you actually told your partner that you know? Because I feel that this is an energy where... You found out that your partner's been cheating. My heart's beating really fast here. You've like, your blood was boiling. Okay. And you've, it's like you feel humiliated. Well, you've been planning up a plan here. And I feel, and then I felt the energy of God bless my brother because he's got, like, cherishing your brother. Your brother's going to help you with this plan. Okay. And love struck is your partner here who is um you can if it feels like you can actually see that they are in love okay and you're um concocting some kind of scheme plan okay <clears throat> the card of not knowing what to do. It is, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> it is the card of intuition as well. But when we're at a crossroads and we don't know what to do, the best thing to do is to do nothing and to go within and wait for direction. But unfortunately... In this situation, it's the devil who's um, got their hands on this situation. There's someone here who's about to take a leap of faith. Now, this is the lover uh, going towards their harmony. They're wanting a clean slate. And then we have the little doggy here. I felt the doggy was napping napping okay so it took me to an energy of like snapping and napping at the uh, nipping nipping nitpicking <clears throat> but I feel like you've been quiet so I felt the dog yapping that was the word and it was like no you've been napping you've been sleeping on this This is a block here. Okay, so like, you know what's going on. Even though you don't know for sure, you're sure you know what's going on. Someone's about to call judgment. Okay, so judgment day is here. It's like this feminine is calling for everything to be revealed. Will the real, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? This is a uh, an act of revenge going on here. Uh, if you if you've humiliated somebody, they're about to do it back to you. Should we have a look at what the flower language would like to say? Defiance, nettle. It's gonna sting. Nettle. Let's look at this energy card. Oh, my cancer. A man holding a heart. This masculine here is detached. So I feel that this mischievous energy 
Well, this could be the masculine who's being mischievous, but the devilish energy, it feels like a feminine who's going to blow the trumpet on this masculine. And she's been told to do so, but it's more the devil. Okay, so this feminine is going to cause some trouble for this masculine here. He needs love. And it looks like she's about to give him a whole lot of aggro. Man holding a heart. A male dealing with family, love or emotions. This tender man sits with flowers all around, holding a heart in his hand. For a man, this signals a greater clarity about emotions and their purpose in your life. We're moving on to page number 144 now. So this masculine is a divine masculine. There could be a more balanced approach to family and love at this time, even if these have been confusing experiences for you in the past. For some, this card upright could signal the presence of a new man in your life, one who tends to be more thoughtful and aware. Whether or not this man is a love interest or a friend, he brings a high intention to help where personal projects, family or home issues are concerned. So, for this masculine here, if you notice that there's a brother that, say, let's say your partner, <clears throat> not the one that uh, you're not with, the one that you're, you all know the one. <laughs> so it feels like there could be a brother that's hanging around, okay, or they're talking to their brother a lot. They're scheming. Okay, heads up. That's that for you, Cancer. Happy birthday. So you're going to get this in motion. Let's have a look at what Leo, because Leo's got to take over from this energy. Whatever you set into motion, Leo's got to get a hand of. They've got to get a hand of, a handle of. <clears throat> okay. I'm putting these back in. It keeps me organised for next time round. Oh, we've got payday. Someone's waiting for you to get paid. And then I think they're going to sting you before you go. They're going to try and get out of you everything that they can. Okay, and they've got backup. So, if you look up, Divine Masculine, don't worry. God's got your back. Leo, let's have a look. What's, um, can we have a look at this energy, please? Tease me, please. Sun. Um, I did feel that energy of the the brother coming in cherishing, and I felt that could be um, like a sibling relationship there, but as in the masculine's children. Tease me, please. So this could be about custody, but if it's a brother, then it means there's another child involved. The clean slate with the full energy. Okay. Um, so Leo, you're going to put an end to this teasing, pleasing scene when it comes to this sun. Okay, there's a clean slate here. Uh, flattered. Interesting. I felt the energy being flattened as well, but flattered. Someone's going to get what they want. And it's going to be enough. So there's a deal on the table here. Leo, you're bringing um, balance. Bring things back to zero point. I feel like there's two clean slates that are going on. Okay, tease me please. This could be something to do with the masculine. Um, in a way, allowing the feminine to think that she's got her own way. I felt the energy of her saying, are you teasing me? So she gets what she wants, but there's a son here. So this could have something to do with custody. If she's been playing with the devil energy, as Cancer suggested, um, then things will settle down and divine justice will uh, 
She might think that she's one for now, but it's just for now. Yeah, look. <clears throat> this masculine, he's down. It's like he's got no more fight in him. So he has to choose another path. He has to choose a clean slate here. He's flattened. And it feels like he's been mocked, teased. Enough now. Okay. There's a resurrection of a connection, but it's a clean slate. Now this gentleman, he has to go in a new direction. So the resurrection of the connection is not with the person that's been uh, misbehaving, mistreating him. There's the manifestation that's coming in. So this is really quite suggesting that there will be balance during the middle of summer, if you want to look at it like that. The card of manifestation is waiting for his ship to come in. Okay, so we go from like being flattened to the opportunity to resurrect a connection. But a message needs to be sent out and then you wait for a, a reply. Peace. Cat towel. Sending messages via the cats. So Leo, you're working with obviously the animal spirits. I feel like this is no longer a cowardly lion. Um, something about Zion's coming through. Okay. If we're talking about iron, <clears throat> then he's regaining his strength. Okay. Let's look at the energy card for Leo. Attachment. So this is very much about detaching from this situation. The clean slate, please. Card number five. Now that's the number of transition. Perceived a need and the choice to let go. In the upright position, this card reveals that your passage forward is being stopped by strong attachments to old patterns or people from the past. The chain at your wrist is bolted to fear from the past or desperation about the future. Although you may wear the mask of pretense or even contentment, you simply can't seem to go forward. The stuff that's keeping you stuck could be physical addictions, emotional patterns or even old relationships. Are you living in fear, addicted to old unhealthy habits or so desperate about the future that you can't be happy now? If so, the chains that bind you could be of your own making. This card is, fe this card is feeling, this card is telling you that it's time to take the action you need to break out of the chains and move forward to an open, free, healthy <clears throat> and authentically happy life. It may take some courage and effort to let go, but know that you are capable of doing it. Until you do, the difficult energy would just repeat itself, keeping you stuck. Okay. That's quite beautiful, isn't it? This clean slate's here. Just need to detach yourself. Okay. For now. Virgo. How are we going to wrap this up? Marriage. Live in the Tao. That's a hermit energy. Curious. The chariot. Oh, this is nice. Making an offer. Finding your balance. 
Now you're considering marriage now, the hermit will go in, go within, live in the Tao. Okay. So I feel like whatever was keeping you attached, that's all been surrendered now, you're free. You've got the chariot, chariot energy which suggests that you can go in any direction you wish to now. You're wanting something long term, so it isn't like just a quick fling. This is something you've been thinking about for a long, long time. I feel it's the masculine from the first uh, portion of the reading, Cancer's reading. Okay, so you've managed to escape that. You're finding your balance, but I feel like you're finding your faith. Uh, back in love. Okay, you're feeling back in love. That would be because of all that pressure that's been released from you. So now you're curious. So I feel like some time's passed, of course, a month or so, since kind of like, let's say, uh, feels the energy of when you started to recognise that you were being manipulated, tricked, okay. Um, it's like somebody had something up their sleeve. It's like the dust has settled a bit. And I'm not sure if it got so bad that they're kind of really not in your life um, on a personal level. So you are free to go. The chariot energy. You're waiting for that nudge. Okay. You're taking it nice and slow. Slow and steady. You don't want to lose your footing again. You've been made to feel a wally. You've made a fool of. Okay, things might still be a bit choppy behind there, but they maybe always will be. You're trying to find your foot in here. Okay, you've definitely become wiser uh, since you kind of, I want to say, have pulled yourself into hermitage. Let's have a look at what the flower language wants to say. Youth. Rosebud. So falling back in love. Musical youth. That's coming through. Past the duchy on the left hand side. Have you been smoking the ganja? <laughs> okay, musical youth. You've connected to your inner child. Well, if you've been taunted and mocked, then there's some healing to do. That hurts. That hurts one's feelings. Okay. So, also, this energy of returning to your youth. Okay. Which makes me feel it's a, a love of the past. Let's look at your energy, Virgo. Walking away. I'm walking away from the shadows in my life. Okay. Let's have a look. Shall we put it over the hermit here? So I feel like you have walked away here. Who are you following? You're following this, uh, this leader. Or the fairies. Things are blossoming really nicely now. Okay. It's like you still get to enjoy like summer. Okay. Let's go to card number 27. I've gone to card 30, which is the garden and the gate. Seems like that's what's going on in this picture. Let me show you these words. You see your feet? It's 11 o'clock on the dot. We're going to 27. I open to the yin yang, 29. It says letting go, moving on. This card shows someone walking away from an existing situation. She is closing the gate behind her and is walking away into a misty, unknown future. This card upright reveals that it could be time for you to make a similar decision. So I do feel like um, the devilish energy has walked away. Not really interested in what you're doing now, you're free. Okay. There may be something that that you finished. There may be something that you're finished with. Perhaps a career, a relationship, or a long-term experience of any kind. The fami familiarity, the familiarity 
of the situation may be enticing, but you're now ready to look at your options on the open road ahead. In reality, an important new beginning is at hand. This card also indicates that now would be a good time to let go of an old habit, emotional pattern or false belief. No matter how deeply ingrained a negative pattern may be, you now have the power to release it and move on to a freer, healthier way of thinking and relating to yourself and others. Whether it's in the inner or outer world, this card is telling you that you have the readiness and resourcefulness to walk away from the old and move forward now. This is an awesome reading for summer. Okay, it doesn't look like it starts off fantastic, but... <coughs> It all gets cleared up. Right, um, I'm going to put these out in little segments, upload them in their seasons. What to expect this summer. Let's go to the journey of love. Do you want to have a look at the bottom of the decks? We have anxiety. It's actually, hmm. I felt it was the energy of, because we started off with the lover, so this is the Divine Feminine's energy. And this is her worrying that things are not kind of moving forward, and they are. So no fear. Worry or distress. The woman on this card is filled with anxiety, worrying about something that causes her a great deal of discomfort. Okay, so here in this news, you might now feel extra concerned for your divine masculine. Uh, worry not. Okay, you're not going to help the situation. Understand that it's all in hand. Okay, it's meant to be this way. It sets the divine masculine free for good. Receiving this card upright may indicate that you're experiencing a time of increasing stress, perhaps even a situation that you find yourself brooding about much of the time. However, if you're noticed the scene outside the window, <clears throat> this may have occurred, guys, okay? So you'll be worrying about something that's already happened. Just know that it's on the cards, in the cards. However, if you'll notice the scene outside the window, the storm is distant and perhaps even moving away. Whatever is going on, this card is telling you to release the worry and let yourself relax. Brooding and fretting will never solve things, so trust in yourself and your process. When you live with a relaxed heart and mind, you're far more likely to receive the solutions that you see. Okay. So what was the underlying energy before I shuffled the cards for the Rider Waite? It was High Priestess in Reverse. Okay. <clears throat> Divine Feminine, tap into your intuition. Bottom of the deck. It was like, I ain't no charity case. So um, this here is the energy of people feeling sorry. For the, for the Divine Masculine, it feels. Okay. Charity. Also, have a charitable heart. Okay. Um, uh, that's it. Just have a charitable heart. Yeah, because there's a tower for the Divine Masculine here. This is going to be tough for him. But it's not your experience, Divine Feminine. So really just keep your heart open and loving during the summer months. Please. Worried. You can't put worry out there. Otherwise your divine masculine will pick up on it and then he's not going to be strong enough to go through with this. Don't worry. God's got the divine masculine's back. Seriously, you have to believe that. Random. The Oracle. Guys, seriously, anytime you fret, like I've said to you before, turn on the song, 
flick through a book, the Bible is the best. It always seems to just ease your mind, give it a go. Tells you really what's going on. Tap into the oracle. Okay, you are the Divine Feminine. Bottom of the channel of Love Deck. Feminine Compassion. Wow, the Strength card here. Come on. 11-11. And really, Leo sits in the middle of summertime. In the summertime when the weather is fine. Feminine Compassion. That's what you need to work on this summertime. Having compassion, Divine Feminine. Okay. Hear that doggy yapping out there? Should we have a look? Oh, I was going to the Journey of Love. I was drawn to go to a Divine Feminine card. Well, let's go to the Divine Feminine pack. Now, we had the Divine Mother come out last night, Savada Devi. I said if there's anyone that can tackle the devil, it's that card. The Divine Mother. Let's see what energy the Divine Feminine is in. This summertime. Okay. And why your soul is opting for you to, or suggest, suggesting that you adopt this energy. Okay. We have had, <laughs> seriously. Oh. Okay, let's reread it. Sarada Devi, let's actually find out, I didn't read the whole of the card, it was the last card on last night's live, um, I believe it was the last card, anyway, we shall read the whole message, and I even know what page, 92, is this correct, let's have a look, it sure is, okay, so let's see who she is, Sri Sharada, Sharada Devi embodies the feminine power that initiates seekers onto a spiritual path through unconditional love. Sarada Devi was born in Jaramambata, Bati, in India, in 1853, to poor Brahmin parents. As a little girl, she worshipped a clay figurine of the goddess Kali, meditated and began to have visions. At age five, she was betrothed to the priest of the Dakshinwar Kali Temple, a beloved mystic named Ramakrishna. Ten years later, she joined him. <clears throat> Ten years later, she joined him at the temple, and they began their lifelong spiritual marriage together. Sarada's husband, Ramakrishna, performed the Shadashi Puja with her, and this meant that Sarada was positioned in the seat of the goddess Kali and was addressed as Shri Ma, or Holy Mother. I've got the taste of fear in my mouth. What's that about? Sarada is considered to be Ramakrishna's first disciple. They both became notable mystics with large international followings. Sarada helped from the monastic order for the devotees of Ramakrishna after he passed. And because she was so beloved, a monastic order was founded for women in her honour. She paved the way for future generations of women to enter the spiritual life. As a guru, Sarada, Sarada Devi was known for treating all her disciples as her children. Many of her devotees were late that she initiated them in a dream. She appeared. She appeared as a goddess in human form and gave them a mantra. When they met her for the first time, they would recall the dream and know instantly they were encountering their guru. When your soul selects her card, Sarada Devi loved all her disciples unconditionally and equally. In her teachings, she emphasised that there is no such thing as a stranger. She encouraged her devotees to understand that everyone we meet is actually a part of us and is connected to us 
and that if we want to experience true peace, <clears throat> oh, it was cat tail that we had, wasn't it? Peace. And that if we want to experience true peace, we need to own the fault and judgment that we project onto others. We need to see our own faults and forgive them with love. Sarada Devi whispers gently to us, No one is a stranger, my child. This whole world is your own. So if something keeps showing up in the people we meet and in the relationships we are cultivating, Sarada asks us to meet them from within us, meaning the aspects of this other person that might be causing us pain or frustration or just plain aversion. These same aspects exist within us. Unless we are willing to really meet with these aspects within us, the universe will keep presenting them to us in our relationships. And it's not to piss us off, it's to free us. It's out of a deep love for us to fully heal. The goal here is for us to love ourselves fiercely from within, without judgment or shame for where we are in the moment. The goal is to let us mother ourselves with unconditional love. That's the only love that will quiet those harsh, critical voices within us so we can stop wasting our time mirrored in judgment of others or ourselves and get on with being the perfectly imperfect light that we are. The Soul Voice Meditation. What am I currently judging on criticise? Oh, judging on, are you judging on criticising? Okay, what am I currently judging or criticising about myself? Intention, unconditional love exists within me. The presence of love is the absence of judgment. Journey of love. Um, let's put these away. Squeaky, squeaky cane. Um, let's give these a shot. I'm feeling the colour of these cards come in with the tower card here. So um, let's have a look at the message. She is the moon. Cover that. Number 21, it's just our year, okay. The light of the moon ebbs and flows. The wisdom of patience is not about waiting around for something to happen rather than getting up and getting it done. The wisdom of patience is that of the gardener who consults the lunar calendar. The right timing, promoting growth, planting when there is fertile soil, and allowing the soil to rest and replenish when it needs to. You're being asked to check in with your timing. It's now the time for action or for rest. It can change quickly, just like the phases of the moon. If you are unsure, that's okay too. Perhaps you are waiting for more light to reveal the way as the moon grows full. All things come in time. And that's a super moon we've got on Thursday. It's Tuesday today. Your message comes through this oracle. Your manifestation is unfolding in perfect timing. If you feel something isn't happening fast enough or is happening quickly and you are unsure if you are really ready, be assured all is well. If something is not clear to you and you would like it to be more so, the clarity you seek will come to you. Do not worry. Do not try to force the insight. Just be with what is happening now and trust. You are moving and growing and all is well. Soon you will see that for yourself, just as the moon grows full and revealing, even in the midst of deepest night. 
Okay, the, po the poem is called Waiting. These moments are precious, like jewels on the crown of life. They beckon my heart, forming memories that sparkle with joy, and like the longing of a sweet caress, they draw me near, melting into one, showing what is possible on the journey of life, waiting for the season's change. Perfect. Rumi. Let's wrap up this uh, summer segment with a message from Rumi. Okay, the bottom of the deck which I was really drawn to is the victory of Maryam, and then we have the lover and the beloved. I feel like these are really important messages. Okay. We should leave that like that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Victory of Mary, I'm card number 41. Oh no, that is the right book. I looked like the wrong book. Okay. I'm just going to read the beginning part. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think that might be that card. I think that is what the card is underneath because I was drawn to read we're going to fully read that card that's there let's have a look at the victory of Maryam I've opened to the next one the lover and the beloved 41 please I've opened to the courage of your love okay hold on I've got to kind of put my fingers in between these pages here we're going to 41 please Okay, so I'm reading for this card here. If you are longing to caress the moon, don't turn away from it. If you are not ill, why, you do, why do you crawl under a blanket to hide? You are in a quarry of sweets. Why do you look so sour? You live in the spring of life. Why are you withered inside? Don't fight against yourself. Don't flee from what could be your glory. Like a fearless moth, dive into the flame. Why be linked to your obsessions? Burn out in the flames until your heart and soul are enlightened. Get out of the old carcass and form yourself a new body. Why are you afraid of a fox when you descend from lions? Why be a lame ass when you have the strength of stallions? The beloved you seek will arrive to open the door to your fortune. For love is the key that opens all your locks. Rumi. The lover and the beloved. When you move beyond consciousness, you caress the beloved. When you move into the unknown, beyond everything, the beloved caresses you. Let's go to the right choice. Stay close to those who know about the heart. Choose the shade of a tree that is in constant bloom. Don't meander aimlessly among the herb sellers and potion vendors. Go directly to the shop that sells nothing but sweets. Don't sit waiting by every boiling pot to have your plate filled. Not every boiling pot is cooking what you want. Not every sugar cane is filled with sugar. Not every down has an up. Not every eye has vision. Not every sea contains pearls. Rumi. Within you, I recognise my most trusted friend. Ah, we go back a long way to before that moment when time began. We knew each other then, even before time was born. So I say... Hello, my old and dear friend, so lovely for us to meet again. And I feel how your heart responds with a wave of love, for it is that love that is you, my most trusted friend. On the path of love, there is not so much wrong and right in the moral sense, so much as what is wrong or right for you. The mind cannot help so much here. 
Only the heart can speak such truths. The mind may reject it, recoil, analyse and find all the reasons why the simple truth, the right choice of the heart, cannot possibly work and only lead to pain. That is what the mind does rather well, actually, but it doesn't mean the right choice, the heart choice, becomes incorrect. It means rather that the heart has outsmarted the mind and the mind will need to bow to the heart, even without understanding its sometimes impenetrable mysteries. Or one can choose to stay in inner conflict, fighting against the right choice, but eventually love will prevail and the way forward must be taken. So can you give up what you have planned, believed or decided? Let the heart wisdom that silently and constantly broadcasts its pure and true intention into the fertile womb of the universe lead the way instead. It will lead you along the right path to the right house where sits the right master for you. He grabs you in a bear hug and gently whispers into your ear, What took you so long? I've been waiting for you since the day you were born. Now we are together. It is time for us to play. It is said that one man's meat is another man's poison. To base your choices on what others have chosen for themselves may end up killing you. Better to take your risks on the angel of your own heart, wise as that being is, and dance to your own heart rhythm instead. There may be fear if others seem to be dancing different steps, but beloved, you know that is just because every heart has its own unique rhythm and yours doesn't want to waltz so much as to tango. So why not allow it to be thus? Page number 133. So why not allow it to be thus without fear or doubt? This oracle comes with a message for you. In your heart you know what holds meaning for you. You may or may not have a grand vision to go along with that meaning as yet, but deep within, you know what is without value and what holds value for you. You were born with those values intact in your heart and whatever confusion has arisen for you along the way is just where the values of others have transfused into your own blood. It is time for a transfusion of holy light into that blood to be cleansed and pure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just have a drink. So you were born with those values intact in your heart and whatever confusion has arisen for you along the way is just where the values of others have transfused into your own blood. It is time for a transfusion of holy light into that blood to be cleansed and purified, restored to its integrity and filled with passion for what is rightfully yours, your unique passion and purpose. I've got a really itchy ear. Okay. If you have been concerned about your path and what steps to take next, this oracle comes as an omen of good things headed your way. Clarity, reassurance, truth and revelation. Don't hold on to a belief system or vision if it appears to be tossed on its head. Let things go the way they will and good fortune will prevail for you. That vision might actually have been upside down all this time and suddenly able to write itself and be born for you if allowed to topple. Or perhaps there is a more fulfilling version of your vision lurking in its remnants to be scooped up by your soul with its hawk vision and eagle deftness. Trust that if you are being drawn away from a tantalising sweet shop, there is a more delicious array of confection just around the corner for you. So yes, have your tantrum if you must. But you will be sheepish soon when you realise the hand of the great beloved that removes is the same hand that bestows even greater gifts.
Okay, guys. There you go. There's the end to this little uh, summer check-in. When the weather is fine. <sighs> guys, I will catch up with you soon. Okay. Take care. Much love. Bye for now.